Hello, I'm Bushra. Welcome back to the series on Cypress. Today we'll see how to use page object model in Cypress. Page object model is a very popular design pattern in test automation. Let's see what it says. So, this is our basic script. If you see, we have all the elements right here in the script. Now say one of them changes. Say the text of the sign in button changes and it changes to say login. Now what do we do? We'll update it here. No problem at all. Now imagine this button is being used in 10 of your tests. So if it changes, you'll have to update it in all the 10 tests. Now you start to see the problem. This is duplicated so many times and so it is really difficult to maintain. So what do you suggest we do? The most obvious solution is to have all the elements defined at a single place, in a single file and use them in all the places you need to. That way, if a property of an element is updated, you'll have to update it in a single place and all your tests will be running fine again. This is great. Now imagine that you are working on a really big project with many many pages and thousands of elements. Now if you are storing all the elements in a single file, then this file will pretty quickly become a mess and very difficult to manage. So we need a better, more manageable approach. So we split the elements into different files based on the page they appear on. Like here in our login page, elements would be stored in a single file. And then we could have another file for storing all the elements that appear on say create post page and so on. This way they are very easy to manage. We know exactly where to go and update. This approach is called page object model. Let's go ahead and implement it in our project. So let's start by creating a folder under integration folder. This folder will contain one JS file per web page. So let's go ahead and create a file for holding all the elements of the login page. Now here we'll create a class. To create a class, we write the class keyword followed by the name of the class. So here, the first element that we are working with is the email. That's an input box. Let's move it out of here. Now here in the body of the class, we'll create a method. Let's call it email. And then inside it, we'll have will have our element. Now we need to return this. So we'll add the return keyword to it. And that's it. So this method will return your email input box. And then once you have this element, you can further do some action on it. Let's also bring a password and the sign in button. Now for these methods to be accessible in other files, we'll have to export this class using So we use export default and the name of the class login. Let's save it. Now to use it in our test file, let's just create a copy of our basic script. Now here to use it, we'll have to import the login class and for that we use Then we'll have to create an object of this login class.
Okay. Now finally, we can access the methods of login class. So if I replace this with login dot choose me all the methods that are available to me from this class. So we'll use email here. And similarly, for password, And that's it done so you see now we do not have any element property here let's run it and see if it works as expected So we have some issue here it says no commands were issued in the test login email type is not a function and I see so actually these are methods and we did not put the round brackets here and there we go should be working fine now let's stop and rerun it And sure enough it's all good and then if you're working with cucumber then you can use these methods in the similar fashion in your step definition files as well you can find this piece of code in the github repository and you can find the link to the repository in the description box below also if you're new to JavaScript I have a JavaScript for tester series here on YouTube channel do check it out. You can find the link in the description box. Thank you.